it's Vanessa for Crafty Gemini Creates and in this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to make this super cute double oven mitt. Okay, it's a great project and perfect for the holidays, your potlucks and even as a gift to give to your family and friends. Let's get started and go over the materials and the supplies that you're going to need to make one of these. All right, so we're starting off here with several different things. First thing you want to do is check to see if your sewing machine comes with a walking foot. We are going to be sewing through a lot of different layers, okay, because we do want to protect our hands from the heat of of your casserole dish and your cookie sheets and things like that so it is quite chunky all right so let's let's go over the fabrics and the measurements so you can see what we did here so you're going to need one fabric for the outside and when i say outside that means the part that's going to be touching the actual casserole dish or, or cookie sheet or whatever so decide what fabric you want to use for here and I'm using Lila's Kitchen. This is a gorgeous collection it's called Lila's Kitchen by Andover Fabrics so that's what I'm working with here and you're going to pick one fabric for there, then another fabric that's going to be for what we're calling the lining, and that's going to be this part here, where your hands are actually touching. So decide, you know, which kind of fabrics you want to use for each of those. You're going to lay one piece down. This is the one that's going to be touching whatever's coming out of the oven, and that you're going to lay it with the pretty side facing down. Now, the dimensions of all these strips that I have layered up here are 7 inches by 34, okay? Now the next layer we have here is a, a product made by Bozel Foam and Fiber. It's called Polytherm Fleece. Now remember that we always link to all the materials and supplies that I'm using in these tutorials. You can just find the link in the video description box directly beneath this video. So this is an insulated fleece. It's punched. You can see there's a more metallic side of it and then one side that's more just like a, a fleece type of side. So you want to lay it so that the shiny side is facing the wrong side of whatever that uh, outside fabric is going to be and you lay it in that direction. The idea is that the reflective side of this polytherm fleece is gonna reflect the heat back onto whatever the surface is that you're actually holding, okay? And then after that, we are going to go ahead and add an extra layer. This is just 100% cotton batting, and I'm using Quilter's Dream Select batting here, and it's just a nice enough loft. It just gives an, an extra little bit of protection there for your hands. And so we're laying that one after the polytherm fleece, and then after that, you have the last layer of what makes up the biggest sandwich of this project, and that is gonna be whatever the lining fabric is. In this case, I'm using the same one that I used in this sample. This is so cute with whisks and spoons and spatulas. I think you guys are really gonna love that, especially for a kitchen project. I really liked it. Now, the next thing is to baste all these layers together. This is where the walking foot comes in hand. Now, you're also gonna to wanna to lengthen your, uh, your stitch, your straight stitch, lengthen it to maybe like a three, 3.5, so you can get through all these layers. So you just lay everything in this exact order. Remember that you can always rewind this video tutorial and go back and see, so you make sure that you're layering all your uh, pieces here in the correct order. So you're gonna stitch all the way around all four of these just to hold them in place. Next step is to make our actual pockets, all right? So I'm gonna set this aside and let's work on the pockets. All right, so for our pocket pieces, we have a fabric here that measures nine and a half inches by seven. We also have a layer of that Quilter's Dream cotton in the middle, same measurements, nine and a half by seven. And then you need one more additional piece of fabric to line the pocket. So two pieces, nine and a half by seven, plus a layer of cotton batting in between. And you need two of those for two pockets, okay? And then I want you to take it to the sewing machine and you're gonna stitch all around it. You can stitch just on four, on three of the four sides because we're gonna bind one of the edges so it's no big deal. So you can see the sample I have here, I've already stitched real close, about an eighth of an inch away from the outer sides. And you're gonna repeat that to get two of these. Now let me show you how we're gonna bind one of the ends. And to show you that, just so you see what I'm talking about as we go through the project, this is what I'm talking about. This is the pocket and this is the binding part. We want a nice finish, okay, when we put in our hands there. So let's work on that. So we have the actual bodies of the pockets done. Then what you need to do is the binding part. Let me find my strip here. You're gonna cut out a strip that measures two and a half inches by about eight. We're gonna trim down the excess afterwards. But you're gonna fold it in half, then you'll open it, refold the outer edges down into the middle, and then you're gonna refold the whole thing in the center. And make sure that you're taking that to your ironing board to press it. I have one that's been done here already for you so you can see exactly how it's gonna look. And then all you're gonna do just take this here and you're going to sandwich it right in there. You can put clips. Where are my wonder clips? Here they are. You can put a couple clips here and take it to the sewing machine and just top stitch those right in place. You just want to make sure that you're catching both fabrics on the front and the back side. Okay? So after you have two of those pockets, they're rectangular in shape, but you are going to make them and lay them on here so they're going to end up being round afterwards. But let me show you how we do that. Where's my sample? Right here. 
All right, so after you get those pockets done, the idea is that on the side that you want facing you when you're using the double oven mitt, you're gonna lay those pockets on either end. So let me go back, just so you guys can see. And you're gonna lay these like this. Make sure that the edge that we just bound is going towards the inside. So you're gonna lay them like this and lay the other one like that. And then I want you to go to the sewing machine and baste around the edges. I know you already basted the other layers, but go ahead and baste this in place to keep everything together and keep it from shifting. Because once we're dealing with all these bulky layers, there is a tendency for it to all shift on you. So that's what you're gonna do. Add this to your layers and just top stitch. You can just top stitch along the two long sides here and that will be plenty, okay? Definitely don't top stitch where the binding is because you wanna leave that open for you to slip your hand through. Now, after you have that, you're gonna go down in the link in the description box below, we have a PDF pattern for you to download just this round template. You can also use like a dish or a sauce or anything like that will work. And you're gonna lay it on the ends of your double oven mitt here. And you can either mark it and cut it with scissors or you can take your time and carefully try and cut through all those layers with a rotary cutter. And I've done the one side there for you. I think this one I'm just gonna mark and trim. And to mark it, I'm just bringing so that the roundest part right here is right on the edge because we don't wanna trim too much from there. We basically just wanna round the edges here. So just do that part. Real simple. And cut through all those layers, okay? So the technique for making this double mitt is really simple because you're basically making the individual components, layering it all up together, and now the easiest part, the funnest part, I think what gives it the nicer, more finished look, is to bind it. Now, to bind this, as you can tell, because we have the curved ends, we need to make bias binding. You can't use crosswise grain cut binding on this because you're not gonna have enough stretch to carefully kind of cup around these rounded edges. So I'm actually gonna show you in this tutorial how to make your own bias binding. So to do that, I have you cut out a square, measures 18 inches by 18 inches of whatever binding fabric you wanna use. You're gonna grab one corner, take it to the next corner so you end up folding this triangle in half, okay? And now to make it easier for myself, instead of trying to cut these long strips this way, I actually bring this bottom corner that's closest to me and I bring it up to match the top. And then I'm gonna grab it and turn it so that now I have kind of a backwards L with the two right angles, like the two right flat sides that I have right here for me. So this should be a right angle and then this gives you that bias edge. So let's grab our long strip ruler here and I love this folding ruler. Remember, the link for where you can find these supplies is in the description box below. All right, so the first thing we need to do is right here where we have all these folds, we have folds and we want strips, right? So we need to get rid of that fold first. So let me trim this down. Just about an eighth or a quarter of an inch, just enough so that you're trimming away that last um, little folded part. Now we're gonna measure over, and I use two rulers for this, two and a half inches. So here's this ruler measuring two and a half inches all the way up, and I'm gonna cut a strip. These are already bias strips. Come over, do the same thing again, and I just want you to cut three times, to make three of these two and a half inch cuts, and that's plenty. It'll give you enough bias binding when we combine the strips together to get around the entire project. And I'm gonna cut one more. All right, so now that we have all these strips, right? How are we gonna combine them? Well, if you look, they're, all the ends are off in a different angle. So what you need to do is first lay your strips with the pretty side of the fabric facing up. And this helps visually so you can see what you need to do and where you need to sew. So you're gonna lay them so that if they were touching, they make one continuous strip. So does that make sense? This angle's going this way, this is going this way. When I bump them up, they match. So that tells me that these two will sew up together and they will finish nicely. But what do we need to do? We need to sew them pretty sides touching. So one is gonna come this way and the other that way. And if you notice, we're gonna use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So what you want is to have on this end, I have a little, a little flap of fabric sticking out a quarter of an inch from here to here. And on this side, I should have the little pointy part of the top strip sticking out a quarter of an inch as well. So the next step is to stitch that line. So just put a pin right here, head over to the sewing machine. And if you want to, if you're a beginner, you've never done this before, you can even draw a diagonal line. So you have an actual guide for sewing and that will help. 
but the more of these that you do, the quicker you'll be able to do them. So if you can see that, I would start right at that intersection of the two strips and stitch all the way down and you end off right at the intersection of those two strips. And I'm gonna do one just to show you, but you're gonna repeat this for all your strips to end up with one continuous long strip of that bias binding. All right. So here is what we get when we flip it. You see that? We joined them perfectly and because we had the quarter inch flap sticking out on both ends, when we pull it back, we don't get any mismatching points here. You have to account for that seam allowance when you're stitching these together on a mitered angle like that. Okay? So all you do there is basically trim off the little dog ears and you end up with one nice flush and clean bias strip. So you're going to continue to do that until you get all your strips together. And then you're gonna end up with a nice little roll like this. And what I've done is I've folded it in half. I always press my seam allowances open to reduce bulk and then fold it in half and give it a good press. So now we have our homemade bias binding. So to attach it, let me show you all what I do. You're gonna attach it basically like you would attach any other binding to any quilt. So we're gonna machine stitch it down first and actually we're gonna machine stitch it to secure it at the end. You can totally sew it by hand, but I'm gonna show you my tips on how to um, machine stitch binding into place. So I generally will start somewhere here in the center, give myself about a 10 to 12 inch strip, extra, and then we'll start with the wonder clips. And we're matching up raw edges of the bias binding with the raw edge of the double mitt, okay? So all your raw edges should match up, just like quilt binding. And I just put a couple to help me get it in place before I start stitching. So we're gonna stitch this all around and you, when you get to the curve part, you're gonna wanna work your way around, but it will give on you because it's cut on the bias. So just take your time sewing nice and slowly. And now the seam allowance for this is about a quarter of an inch. So make sure you have that walking foot in there. And if you want, you can even on this point here, since we went ahead and trimmed it down round, you can go back and kind of uh, base this into place just to condense the layers down a little bit more. If you know that your machine kind of struggles to go around it. So I'm gonna go to the machine and take a few minutes to stitch this whole thing all the way around. I'm gonna start about here and I'm gonna stop about here as well, giving myself a nice big chunk so that I can end off my ends uh, of the binding when I get there. All right, so I've just started sewing into the curve here and I just take my time and kind of take a few stitches at a time. So you wanna make sure that your machine is set to stop with the needle down. I just take a few stitches, kind of curve it a little bit, lift up my presser foot if I need to rearrange anything, but making sure that that needle is in the down position so you don't lose your place. Take a few more, adjust myself, adjust the quilted part, adjust the binding. And you don't really need to pull on it. It's already on the bias, so it will stretch for you when you go to flip it to the back side. Right. So now let me show you my quickest and easiest. It's my favorite way to finish off binding ends. So for one end here, I'm just going to trim it a little bit. Okay. One of them is not going to matter. The important thing here is to make sure that your two strips overlap by whatever the width of your strips were. So by that, I mean, how wide did you cut your strips for the binding? And in our case, we did two and a half inches wide. So two and a half inches. This one needs to overlap. Let me make this a cleaner, straighter cut. This one needs to overlap this one by the width of the strip. So by two and a half inches. So you can see, I'm just putting it slightly off so you can see where that bottom strip is. And I'm gonna measure over from here, two and a half inches. So two and a half puts me right here. And I can just draw a straight line for you so you can see. All right, so does that make sense? From here to here, they're overlapping by the two and a half. So what we do is trim off the excess from the top strip. And now you're gonna see that when we stitch these two together, you're gonna get a seamless and perfect join right here. So to do that, we're gonna go back to the same way that we put our strips together. You're gonna turn it, lay one of your strips facing, pretty side facing up and vertically, 
And then you're basically going to make a backwards L. So the next strip has to go pretty side facing down and going this way. I'm going to put some pins here just to hold this a little bit more steady so you all can see. And just fold your project as you need to to get the angle that we want here. All right, and the idea is we're going to stitch from this top corner to this bottom corner. Again, if you want to, you don't need to. Once you do this several times, you'll be able to just eyeball it at the machine as you're stitching. But just so you can see it, and for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to draw the line so you see exactly the stitch line. So top right corner to the bottom left corner. So I'm going to stitch right there and show you how easy and perfect it is to join your binding ends. All right, that was painless. Get rid of our pins, and now we can trim back our seam allowance to our quarter inch. I press this open, and you can also press it with your iron, but I can just finger press it flat, and now watch the magic. When I open this up, it lays perfectly flat in place, super easy. All you have left to do is to top stitch this part to finish attaching this. And then your binding is going to be attached completely on one side. And I'm going to show you my tips on how I machine stitch it to the other side. Okay. Easy peasy. Now we need to flip this back, right? And stitch it to the back side. What I want you to do at this point, because we've been sewing through so many layers, is to go around, look and see what you need to trim up. So I can see I have a little bit of extra bulk sticking out here. I'll trim that bit off. Any extra bulk you get in there is not going to allow your binding to really finish cleanly on the other side or far enough over that you'll be able to machine stitch it down. So if you need to trim, go ahead and trim. I feel like I have a little extra bulk here. All right, that looks good. Okay, so let's move some stuff out of the way here and take it to the ironing board. And I want to press it all to the back side before I show you the next step, okay? All right, so we're pressing it and you can see that the bias binding is kind of like cupped over this way. Well, when you push it back, it really is just going to hug that curved edge and it's going to finish nicely in place. So I'm just going to quickly press this, press that binding all the way to the back. Looks good from this side. So my favorite way to prep this up so that I can machine stitch it from the front is to use some glue based it. And I'm going to show you how I do it. It's super easy. You just lay a bead of glue where your binding is going to be. You're going to fold that binding up and over it. And then I just want you to set it with a hot iron. And you're going to work your way around the entire thing. It will literally look like it's almost done, except there's no stitching. So you can see, just like that, tuck in anything that you see in there. And the same thing works for those curves. So I would just glue this down, press it with that iron. And you're basically getting rid of all the prep work because nothing is going to move on you. You don't need pins. You don't need clips at this point when you go to stitch it down. Now, to stitch it down, once you've basted the entire thing, what I want you to do is go from the front side, flip it back to where you see the pockets, and then what you're going to do here is you're going to stitch in the ditch. And the ditch, for those of you that don't know, is basically where the binding meets whatever the patchwork is or the project itself. So in this little groove here is where you're going to stitch. And once you do that, you're going to do that all the way around. And then you'll end up with something like this. You can see I stitched in the ditch. If you pull back there, you can really see the stitching because I used a gray thread. But you can see where the stitching is. And when we flip it to the back, you can see that it catches the binding, okay, all the way around. Even on this side, pull it back, you can see the stitching. And you can use a contrasting thread or coordinating. It's not going to matter too much. So you do that, flip it, 
and it catches on the back side. As long as you glued it in place, you want to make sure that you have more of the binding towards the back than you do on the front side so that it will catch when you stitch in the ditch from the front side. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you give it a try. I'm sure you're going to have these ready for some holiday parties this holiday season and that you'll make some as gifts to give to your friends and family. If you enjoyed this video tutorial, hit it with the thumbs up below, share it across the different social media sites, and of course, like always, don't forget to click my subscribe button so you won't miss out on any future videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.